Hey guys, welcome back to Cruising with Matthew, and today I'm going to be talking all about Carnival Cruise Line's newest ship, Mardi Gras, and highlighting some of her key areas, so I really hope that you enjoy this video. So Carnival took delivery of Mardi Gras in a live signing ceremony at the Mir TQ shipyard in Turku, Finland. Now this is a big moment for Carnival and the shipyard itself due to the issues relating to the COVID-19 pandemic and the fact that it is their very first ship to run on LNG, which is a really important point moving forward for the cruise line industry as it endeavours to become more environmentally friendly. Now Mardi Gras is a significant departure from all recent naming of Carnival ships, with every single ship in recent years being named as Carnival something, such as Carnival Sunshine, whereas Mardi Gras does not feature the name Carnival before it. Now this is a nod to their first ever ship, Mardi Gras in 1972. Now fast forward to today and the new Mardi Gras is a bit bigger than the old one, weighing in at 181,000 gross tons, making her the largest in the Carnival fleet. She is also an excellence class cruise ship and the eagle-eyed amongst you will find similarities to ships such as Iona and also Ada Nova, which are both based off similar designs. Now Mardi Gras has the ability to carry 5,200 guests at double occupancy and 2,000 crew and she spans 19 decks. Hopefully she will enter service in early 2021 from Port Canaveral with the hope that she will be able to commence seven day cruises to and from the Caribbean. Now Carnival have broken Mardi Gras down into six distinct zones with the first being Grand Central. Now, Grand Central, as the name may suggest, is the real focal point for Mardi Gras. The centerpiece of this entire area has to be the atrium, which features 3,000 square foot of glass so that guests can watch the world go by, whether they're in port or they're at sea, and really take in the fantastic space that Grand Central occupies. I really like this design as it is quite different from any ship's previous atriums that I have been on. So I think this will definitely be a wow moment when you board the ship. Now by night, this space will transform into a performing area for a variety of performers, although this hasn't been revealed, and it's been stated that they will interact with 16 LED screens, which are 6 by 14 feet in size. There will also be aerial performances as well as things like lasers, so I imagine this is going to be an absolutely incredible area to watch performances take place. Now leading off from the Grand Central Atrium, there are a variety of bars and restaurants around this space, including Java Blue Cafe, which features a variety of hot drinks and snacks, and this is definitely somewhere that I would visit because I love nothing better than reading a book in the atrium area of a ship, drinking one of my favourite coffees. There's also Cherry on Top, which looks like it features every possible variety of sweet you could ever ask for, which means that'd be perfect for gifts to take home or gifts for yourself, I guess, but it definitely seems like anyone with a sweet tooth would be very happy in this area. There is also the Punchline Comedy Club, which features a variety of stand-up comedians who will both perform adult-only and family-friendly shows. So this really seems like a dynamic space, and I can imagine it will definitely make a good first impression when people board the ship. Moving on to the next zone, La Piazza, which features speciality restaurants such as Cucina del Capitano, which is an Italian family-themed restaurant acknowledging the heritage that the captains of Carnival Cruise Line has, with the significant majority from Italy. I think this is a really nice touch and it will serve a variety of foods such as antipasti and pastas. Nearby there is also a pizzeria which is open 24 hours a day so you definitely won't be hungry. Nearby there is also going to be an Italian themed cocktail bar so this sounds like a perfect place to end the night or start the evening. Mardi Gras will also feature a New Orleans inspired zone known as the French Quarter. So this zone will feature Emeril's Bistro 1396 which is by Emeril Lagasse and features a menu covering a wide variety of things such as fried oysters, barbecue shrimp, duck and sausage gumbo and even breakfast options such as shrimp with grits or breakfast po' boys. Now I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what all of that will consist of, having never gone to New Orleans myself, but I'm sure it will be absolutely fantastic. 
Close by there is the Brass Magnolia. Now this is a jazz bar which will feature signature cocktails such as the Brandy Crusta or the Hurricane. In the background there will also be jazz trios playing and this sounds like an absolutely incredible bar. I absolutely love jazz music and I can't imagine anything better. Now nearby there is also a very eclectic sounding cocktail bar known as Fortune Teller. The decor is definitely quite eye-catching and is aiming to feature some showcase cocktails including New Moon which is completely black apparently as well as a colour changing cocktail aptly named Abracadabra and also a cocktail known as Golden Galaxy which will actually contain real gold within it. So if you're someone like me who wants to try some weird and wonderful cocktails this is definitely the bar for you. Now moving outside there is Summer Landing. Now this features a fantastic looking aft pool known as the Patio Pool which also has a number of hot tubs nearby. There's also a variety of bars and restaurants nearby so you can get a quick bite to eat. This includes Guy Fieri's barbecue style, Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse and Brew House. Now this will feature foods such as smoked Andrew sausage and blue ribbon chicken which sounds really interesting and nearby there is the waterhole bar which means that you're never too far from the pool and also a cocktail at the same time which is very important for me on a cruise and there's also swirls which offers 24 hour free ice cream and also frozen yogurt. Next up is the Lido zone. Now the Lido zone unsurprisingly has quite a number of pools in this area. So the first pool is known as the beach pool and this has a large movie screen where Carnival offers dive in movies and this will mean that you'll be able to sit back and relax in the sunbed and watch a variety of films which is a fantastic experience having done that on Azura. Now nearby there is also a huge number of food and drink options such as the Seafood Shack which serves seafood platters and rolls. There is also Blue Iguana Cantina which offers a variety of tacos and burritos with side options of things such as salsa as well. Now if Mexican style food isn't your thing there's also Guy's Burger Bar which offers a variety of burgers with chips and you can also customise the burgers with Carnival's own toppings bar which I can imagine is really nice to do and there is also so Street Eats, which offers a variety of food served as fried, steamed or grilled in a grab and go format. Now I really like this concept because it means that you can pick and choose and try slightly different foods to what you would normally have. There is also the Red Frog Tiki Bar, which is two decks high and a new feature on Mardi Gras. And this will offer a variety of exotic sounding cocktails such as the Polynesian Punch, Jungle Bird or Red's Rum Jumper. And these sound a perfect accompaniment to a day at the pool that's for certain. Now between the Lido's two main pools there is also the Lido marketplace which is open 24 7 and offers a variety of buffet style food. Now if you move right to the back of the ship at the aft there is also Tides Pool as well as two large whirlpool spas and I am absolutely loving the number of aft pools available on Mardi Gras because I have to admit an aft pool is probably my favourite spot on a ship on a sea day. There is also a poolside bar and also Big Chicken which is a chicken restaurant unsurprisingly. This offers a huge range of chicken meals including chicken strips, sandwiches and you can have sides such as potato salad. There's also breakfast options such as a three cheese omelette and also a chicken biscuit. Not entirely sure what that is, but please do let me know in the comments below. There's also the Tides Pool Bar if you get thirsty, and it means that in this area you are definitely not far from any form of food or drink. Now the final zone on board Mardi Gras is the Ultimate Playground, and this is probably the most talked about feature of Mardi Gras, and that is Bolt, the Ultimate Sea Coaster, where you can choose how fast you can go up to 40 miles per hour on a 800 foot long track suspended in places 187 feet above the water. Now this is something that blows my mind how engineers manage to imagine this but it sounds absolutely incredible and if that isn't your thing there's also waterworks which features a wide variety of water slides and there's also sports square which features a mini golf course basketball court and also a ropes course and definitely something for everyone in this area. Now other interesting areas include the fact that Mardi Gras will also feature the family feud game show where you'll be in a studio audience where people will be picked to compete during the show as well which sounds like lots of fun. Another interesting feature 
feature is Carnival Kitchen, which will offer a variety of cooking classes and also in evenings there may be a class or a cooking demonstration and also a themed dinner. The lovers of pampering can go to Cloud Nine, which is Mardi Gras Spa, and this includes the likes of a thermal suite, a thalassotherapy pool, and also treatment rooms, although these are extra charge, and there is also an open access gym. A ship the size of Mardi Gras has a huge number of cabin grades, which means that there's one suitable for pretty much every budget. So the cabin options include your standard interior, ocean view, and balcony cabins, but there's also dedicated cabins for four people, known as family harbour cabins, and this is really good for families or friends traveling in groups of four. You can also have a spa balcony or suite, which means that you can have access to Cloud9, and that is included within your fare if you're a massive fan of the spa. And there is also some absolutely incredible looking suites, and this is known as the XL Suite class. And 12 of these feature a gorgeous aft balcony, and for those of you who have seen my Azura vlog, you all know how much I love the look of an aft balcony, and I would absolutely love to spend my cruise in one of these. You will get your traditional suite features such as a bubble soda package, as well as a dedicated concierge and things like that, but unique to Mardi Gras is access to Loft 19, which I will talk about in a second. The highest grade of suite is known as the XL Presidential Suite and these feature the largest balconies in Carnival's fleet and even has its own hot tub and is above the bridge which I find incredibly cool and will mean that you have fantastic views. Now like I mentioned all XL Suite guests will have access to Loft 19 which features its own infinity pool, lounges, cabanas and additional amenities such as the availability of fresh fruit, chilled towels, lunch delivery and all also a concierge service. Now all Excel guests have access to this but other people who aren't in those suites can access it but this will come at an extra cost. Now being based in England and not being a massive fan of flying I've never really had a chance to see or explore a carnival cruise ship but I am really impressed and I think people will be absolutely blown away because from these pictures I am definitely impressed by the look of this ship and I only hope that she can be full of passengers in the not too distant future. So that was my video talking all about Carnival's Mardi Gras and I think she looks absolutely incredible and I do hope that people get to experience her for themselves in the very near future. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated and if you have any questions do comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then do take a look at some of my other social media links, including the likes of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a Facebook group. I post in there daily, so I'd love to see you there. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. So this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.